So how do you keep your scattered objects, such as grass, from intersecting with other objects in your scene, such as rocks, tree stumps, or even other scattered grass? In this video, we're gonna take a look at exactly how you can do that in Blender's geometry nodes using the Raycast node. And I'm gonna explain why I think this node is so powerful and one of the most important nodes that you can use in your workflow in geometry nodes. So if you're new to the channel, I'm Kenan Profit. Thanks so much for joining us. We're gonna jump into Blender. I'm gonna use my Blender Ground Foliage Pack. It's available from my website. You can grab it for just five bucks. It's on sale for just five bucks. Uh, if you want to use something else, that's totally fine. Helps me out if you uh, want to go check that out. I did a video about geometry nodes a while back, got great response, but one of the most uh, common comments I got was, okay, I can s use geometry nodes to scatter grass on a ground plane, but now I wanted to avoid objects in my scene. How do I do that? Blender's come a long way and we have a great solution. So I'm gonna jump into Blender. I've got my ground plane set up here. So let's go into geometry nodes. And with that plane selected, I'm gonna create a new geometry nodes network. This is the input, this is the output, which is displayed um, over here in the modifiers panel. The input is just the geometry you see in the viewport. It detects automatically what's there. All right, so let's uh, just drop in a distribute points on faces node. So I'm gonna plug that in. And if the points are giant, it probably means you need to apply the scale of your plane. So control A, apply scale. And there are, uh, that's better, a bunch of points. All right, so I'm gonna set the density uh, down to just one for now. If you wanna get your ground plane back in there, then shift A and drop in a join geometry node. And then what we can do is take the group input, the actual ground plane, and feed it into that join geometry node. I'll move this down like that. So now uh, the plane is joined with our points and you can see them as such. Now let's get, let's just jump right into the Raycast node. Before we do that, I'm going to add an object into the scene just for demonstration purposes before we get into the assets. So shift A, and I'm gonna add in a sphere and scale up this sphere to about right there. And let me select my ground plane again, and I'm going to shift A and add in a Raycast node. And the Raycast node um, is really, it's, it's way more powerful than I'm actually even gonna scratch the surface of in just this video. But basically you can feed it geometry or an attribute or positions, things like that, ray direction, and you can return information on this side that can then be used for a, a multiple variety of things. So a lot of people get confused. The target geometry is not, it's not this, right? You don't want to, I mean, you might want to in some cases, I guess, but it's not looking for your ground plane. It already knows that um, the ray is going to be shot from your ground plane to whatever the target geometry is there. So in this case, our sphere that we just made. And we can amend that later to be like the the rocks or the stump or something. For demonstration purposes right now, let me just grab this sphere from the outliner and drop it into our geometry nodes network. And it automatically creates an object info node. So if you didn't wanna go through those steps, you know, you could just add an object info node and select the sphere and there you go. All right, so now if we feed this as our target geometry, then we can return information about where the rays are cast, ray cast, from this ground plane, right? It automatically detects because the network is on the ground plane. So a ray is gonna be shot from the ground plane in what direction? Zero degrees in the X, Y, negative one in the Z it's gonna shoot a ray in the negative one direction and this is the length. Right now it's set, if we set this to say positive one, it'll shoot a ray in the positive Z direction straight up. And then we can say, did it hit anything on on the way out of that plane? And hopefully it'll find this sphere. It'll say, yep, hit that sphere. All right, and we can visualize this. If we take the is hit group directly into the selection of that distribute points on faces, so if we go into wireframe, then we see nothing. So we failed. Uh, thanks for watching, that's the end of the video. Hope you have a, 
All right, all we have to do is change on our sphere, change it from the original position to relative so that it detects wherever the object is in 3D space. And there you can see now all the points, if you can see inside the, the wireframe there, are limited to this sphere. So if I go to solid view and then hide the sphere, uh, you can see the points in there. This is so powerful, really, really cool. Just think about what you can do with this. So uh, watch what happens if we just scale up the sphere. Go to wireframe, all our points scaled up. Watch in real time, they scale in real time. You know, you can move it around. This is just really, really great. So that's that's it. That's how easy the Raycast node is. It's just returning information about which direction a ray was shot from the ground plane and did it find something? Did it hit something in that positive direction? Now you say, uh, okay, that's not going to help if this was an object that we wanted, we wanted to avoid that object. We want it to distribute points everywhere but there. How do we do that? We want it to be not the selection that we created. So we need a not node and we can uh, do a, a Boolean math node. So shift a uh, Boolean math, drop that in and set this to be a not value. And now uh, you can see what it does is, is it finds, let me hide that. Hopefully you can see these uh, points there. It, see them a little better. Wherever that sphere is, it just avoids it completely. No weight painting needed. It was just amazing. So if I grab this, move it over here, wireframe, you can see it avoids that sphere. So that you can do this in real time too. So you, you can animate that, of course, and it could be like an effector if you want something to fade in. So that's the basics. Hopefully you can see how uh, useful that is to have you're able to scale, move move something around and decide where not to grow something. So let's put this in a more practical situation like with grass and rocks, for example. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that object info. I don't need the sphere anymore, just delete that. And let me set up a simple scatter here so we can we can view this even better. After my distribute points on faces, I'm going to add in an instance on points node and then all your points should disappear because it's looking for an instance object right there and if you're using uh my ground foliage pack which is on sale for five dollars <laughs> then you can everything's broken up into collections easily to make things like this really easy so i can just grab this collection of grass drag it into my geometry nodes outliner take the geometry into the instances and it'll instance that whole collection onto those points. But the problem is it's instancing the entire collection and it's in the wrong position. We need to set the position to be relative, separate children and reset children, and then that'll snap everything to your actual ground plane. But now it's combining all the grass clumps on top of each other. We need it to, on the instance node, pick instance and then it separates them all and now it's grabbing uh, one at a time and just scattering it on the ground plane. So you can crank up the density and you see yippee, grass. So now let's say we're setting up a scene here and let's go ahead and uh, make this look a little bit nicer. We might as well. So I'm going to add some random uh, value to the scale and the rotation. So a random value float node Flow attribute is fine into the scale. And you can set this to, a, I'll just do like 0.25, set the max value to, you know, maybe 2.5. So now we have, a, a well, let's go 1.5. We have a, a wide variety of scale there. Okay, um, now I'm, I'll shift D, duplicate that node and set this to vector. Because with the vector, let me give myself space here. With a vector, this allows us to affect x, y, and z value of an object. So because the the grass, the rotation value, we only want it to rotate along the z, 
uh, that's why we want to set this to a, a vector. So I'll show you what I mean. If I plug in the value of this into the rotation, it's applying a value of one to, to the rotation on, on the X, Y, and Z. Well, we don't need the X or the Y, so zero those out. And then on the Z, we can just crank this up till the grass starts rotating, you know, infinitely. <laughs> uh, and it'll just roll a dice basically on the Z of, of what degree of rotation each clump gets. Okay. So that's looking much better. We got some randomization going on both rotation and scale. Yay. A field of grass. Cool. All right. So now let's say we want to uh, do a little bit of set dressing here. So let's grab some rocks. I'll just set up a little, little scene, a little field of rocks. Scale this up and you already see where I'm going with this. So there's some nice rocks. Maybe I'll duplicate one, rotate it around, scale it way up. Uh, so it's not that bad, but you can see there's definitely grass just going straight through the rocks. All right. And you could, you could do this as a scatter as well. You could have these rocks be scattered uh, using geometry nodes. But for our purposes, this works just fine, having them hand place set dressed into the scene. Well, now what we can do is, uh, if you look, these rocks are, are already in a collection by themselves. And we can use this entire collection as our target geometry in our Raycast node. All right, so I'm gonna take this rock collection, drop it right in here, and we need to realize these instances since they're a collection. So I'm going to shift A and drop in a realize instances node. And I'm going to take the geometry into that and then the output of this into the target geometry. And look at that. Boom. It cast array in the positive one direction. So it found all everything up here and it did its best to avoid growing points anywhere where those rocks are. And you might get a better result if you cast in the negative direction. So if I set the ray direction to negative one on Z, look how much of these rocks are underground. It's gonna find that surface area and avoid distributing a point right there. And it does a really, really a pretty good job of avoiding. So this is before if I press M disable, and this is after. You can see we get it, get rid of, it's not perfect, you know, obviously because of the scale of grass you get rid of a lot of that penetration just by doing that. And look how cool this is in real time. If I just move this rock around, the grass starts to disappear. So if I grab all these rocks, I'll go to top view, just move them around. The grass just moves out of the way. And remember it's casting the ray in the negative direction. So the farther underground you go, the bigger that bald spot will be. And you know, right there, there's a shoots a piece of grass because there's a, a hole in the middle. So it's it's actually very, very accurate. And it does a really good job of avoiding those objects in your scatter. It's just really, really cool. Uh, this this node wasn't previously available when geometry nodes first came out. So when whenever you were doing things like a, a nature scene, you had to hand weight paint where you wanted the rocks to be make sure they avoid the grass and, and everything like that. Well, now you have something like this where you can take just an entire collection of objects and feed it into a Raycast node and have your grass just avoid those objects. It's really, really powerful. Now, this isn't limited to actual objects. You could take like the instance output right here from a network, say you instanced a bunch of rocks and you want the grass to avoid all the rocks you instance or flowers or stumps or whatever it is, you could then take this output directly into the Raycast node and have it avoid like a whole separate collection of, of rocks in that manner. So it's incredibly powerful, really, really useful for separating your set dressing, separating your, your scattered objects and avoid that pesky penetration that is so common and so, you know, just it, it can be really frustrating to have to hand weight paint around objects. Well, now you have a way of just instantly getting that data 
and feeding it into a raycast node and having your grass uh, avoid that. So if I crank up the density, you can see we're not getting, you know, there's a few stragglers around here. You might kind of be able to rotate or scale the rock to get rid of them. But for the most part, I cranked up that density and we're not getting penetration where the rocks are. Really, really cool, super powerful. I hope you guys uh, found this tutorial useful. I hope you're able to use it in your geometry nodes and in your setups. I know that once I kind of figured this out, it really helped me in my in my setup. So thanks so much for watching everyone. If this was helpful, please leave a comment. I do read all the comments. I try to respond to as many as I can. If the ground foliage pack looks like it'll be helpful, then please check that out. Like I said, it really does help me out. Thanks so much for watching everyone. I'll see you next time.